So this time we're going to utilize the ID for the purpose of repel. So again, we're going to take our end, we're going to put a stopper knot in it, we're going to throw it up and down to the ground, and we're going to tie another um, figure eight into our anchor point and um, ensure that the line is all secure, and then we can go ahead and read the ID. Again, nothing has changed. We're still identifying where the loop is in the system, and the loop is at the anchor point. Um, once we close the plate, we confirm that the working end or the line going to the anchor point is coming out of the side of the device and that the running end is feeding out of the top of the device or is actually feeding in to the top of the device. Now we can go ahead and connect the ID to our rescuer and our rescuer will now apply the load and he can now go ahead and descend over the side of the building. What Todd's actually going to do here, Todd, I'll get you to show that uh, thumb trigger. If when we look on the ID, we'll see the handle has a thumb trigger. And the thumb trigger is a about a 10 pound um, factor that allows you to bypass the cam. But it, can, it will not support your weight. That trigger will only support the amount of load that you can maintain with your thumb, which is going to be about 10, maybe 20 pounds if you're super strong. Um, the purpose of it is to allow you to approach an edge, for example, without, or with, with less difficulty, or if you've given yourself, not given yourself enough slack. And it's also used in the low angle environment where we don't have a significant load, where predominantly, for example, rescuers might be walking up themselves. And um, it allows you to take rope in as well. For what we're doing here, generally going out over the side of a building, we don't utilize the trigger. It's a bypass, but not a bypass that can cause a critical failure. Thanks, Doug. Okay, we now call to our repeller, ready on down and down slow. Todd just opens up the handle, finds the sweet spot, feeds in from the running end, and down he goes. That's simple. Take a look at the use of the ID for a, a two-man load. It's important to recognize that the ID was actually developed not for the fire service, not for emergency rescue um, in particular, but it, it, was, it was developed for working at heights. And it was actually originally designed for a single person load, um, really not in excess of 300 pounds. And when they created the fire department version, they beefed it up a little, but they didn't change the internal mechanisms, the internal workings of the device. So they, there are several techniques um, utilized by Petzl to handle a large load or what we would call a rescue load. So what would happen, we would lower our rescuer down um, to the uh, patient, ready on down, down slow. They would arrive at the patient, we can lock off the device and at that point we're going to incorporate a second carabiner. So we're going to take a second carabiner, we're going to uh, attach it to our anchor point, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the running end of the line, and I'm going to, and I'm going to reeve that through the second carabiner and lock it off. All that's going to do is just going to create that additional friction. Now as I open up my trigger with the increased load, we're going to call out once again, ready on down, and down slow. Down, down. And that's really just that increased friction that is going to make the operation of the handle so much easier. I'm looking at Todd now and he's really, really working to uh, get travel on this main line. completing a pickoff with the ID. So moving from a single person load, repelling, completing the function of a pickoff, and switching to a two person load. Okay, so I am going to repel down to my patient, lock off, tie off,
Now I have pre-rigged, for simplicity as I'm over the edge, I've pre-rigged my victim strap into the ID. Uh, one upgrade or one change to the ID, newer IDs is we can now incorporate two carabiners into the into the hole of the ID. So my second carabiner for the pickoff strap is in the same hole. I now perform the functions of picking off my patient. Once I have the patient picked off, to add the friction necessary for a two-person load while I'm repelling with them, I simply connect or I snap the rope through a carabiner which is connected into my side D-ring on my hip. Once that's ready, I am ready to now repel down slow with my patient.